So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Photoshop on one panel to create really good looking Instagram inspired effects to your photographs. Now there are a lot of apps out there that allow you to do this in one click, but getting an understanding of how you can do it can really help when you're retouching your own images or if you're doing this commercially. So in one panel, a whole a range of different options available to us. So let's see what that panel is and take a look at some of the effects we can create with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can recreate some of these really cool stylized effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the right hand side and we're going to come to the adjustments panel and in there we're going to choose the curves adjustment. Now if you don't see this you can simply come to the window menu and scroll down and just check the adjustments and that'll open up the panel and show you all these options. So for this effect we're just going to simply add a curves adjustment layer. So we're going to click on that, that will now create a new curves adjustment layer with its own dedicated mask and open up the curves panel. Now if we take a look at this, it might look daunting and complicated, but in reality it's fairly straightforward. What it does is it shows us a histogram in the background of the tonal information in our image. So if we take a look at the bottom, you can see we've got this gradient slide that goes from dark on the left to light on the right. And what that denotes is the bottom left hand corner is where all our darkest information is, our shadows and so on. And we have this grid behind it. Now this grid, if we break it down, it's broken down into four distinct sections. We've got the shadows in the bottom left. We've then got the midtones in the center. We've got the shadow information. We have the highlights and we have the whites in the top right hand corner. So we can make adjustments to this very easily. So we can add nodes. So we can just simply click on this line to add additional nodes in there. And we can now start editing and adjusting those nodes. So if we come down to the bottom left hand corner, you'll see that if I start to drag this node up, if you take a look at the shadow information in our image, we're taking the darkest point, we're lifting that up and we're converting that and we're making it lighter and lighter and lighter. So you can see what we're effectively saying is that the dark information, the blacks, are no longer going to be black, that we're bringing them up to make them gray and lighter and so on. And that's the same on all these different nodes. So we can use that to our advantage. Let's just say we want to create this nice stylized sort of filmic effect. Well, one of the things you tend to find with film is that it didn't have black blacks and white whites. So let's start off with that. We're going to grab the dark shadow information. We're going to lift that up and we're going to just crush our black. So you can see now our blacks are no longer black. We're getting that dark gray. We're going to come to the light, the highlight or the white point in the top right hand corner. We're going to bring that down ever so slightly and that's going to flatten out the whites. So if we do a before and do after, you can see we now have a very flat looking image. Now in the center, we've got all our mid-tone information and generally you kind of want to leave this where it is because that deals with the overall brightness of your image. But there's no rule to this. If you want to create a stylized effect, you can use that to your advantage. So you can see if we grab that node and lift it up, we start to get this very posterized effect. And if we start to drop it down, we start to get increased color, but very flat looking mid-tones to the image. So let's just put that back roughly where it was. Now, if I want to get rid of any of these points that I've added in there, I can simply just grab the node and drag it off the histogram and you'll see it disappears. If I want to put it back, I can just simply click and that'll add a new node back in there. We're not limited to the number of nodes we can use. We can add as many as we want in there to create the effect that we want. So we've got the basics. Let's just start to have a little tweak of this and we're going to just lift these highlights. We're going to make those highlights just a little flatter, I think. Not too much, just a slight amount. And if we take the shadow information, we can drop that down and that'll overall add some additional contrast while retaining those crushed blacks. So there's before, there's after. So we've got a nice look to it already, but we can go one step further with this. We may have the effect to start off with, but we want to adjust some of the color information. Now you may think that the curves is not the right place to do that, but we can go in and we can adjust the RGB or the CMYK color channels and we can adjust those to our favor. So let's take a look at how we can do that next. So if we come back over to our curves panel, you can see we've got RGB as a drop down. If we click on that, 
we've got the red, green and blue channels we can start to work with. So let's go down to the blue to start off with and we're going to do something simple and a very common effect. We're going to add some blue into the shadows and we're going to add some yellow into the highlights to give it that nice sort of cool and warm balance across the shadows and the highlights of the image. So let's click on blue and you can see that now shows us a histogram with a blue tint and we now have a blue diagonal line. So we're now dealing with the blue color inside the image itself. And the same applies to this. What we effectively have is the histogram of tonal information and we can then pick out exactly where we want the colors to take influence. So for example, let's just add a couple of points to our curves line. And let's come down to the shadow information. Now keep an eye on the shadows and you'll see as I start to lift this, we'll start to cool the image down and introduce a blue tint into the shadows. So let's take a look before and after. So you can see the overall effect is there. Now we could do the opposite. We can come up to the white part of our image and we can adjust that. So if we drag this over, we start to introduce yellow into those areas. So why do we introduce yellow? Because it's the opposite color on the spectrum. So the opposite color to blue is yellow. So we can adjust this and we can introduce either yellows or blues into any of the tonal information in this image. So let's just say in the highlights we want to introduce a little bit of yellow into there. Well, we can do that quite easily by coming to the node that we've placed on this intersecting line, which is effectively where our highlights are. And if we grab that node and we start to bring it down, you'll see we start to get a more yellow tint into those highlights. So you can see we can use this to build up quite nice looking color effects. So you can see we now have that sort of warmer highlight and we have a blue tint to the shadows. So let's just bring that blue back out and let's go to the actual shadow information and we'll boost the blues in there to give a slightly different effect. So you can see now we cool down all of the sort of shadow area, not just the blacks. And again, we can come in and we can tweak this to get exactly what we want. But you can very quickly create these very stylized looking images by simply just using the tone curve. And that means the red, green and blue or the CMYK, depending on which color mode you're working in on your image itself. So we can create these really good looking effects just by using one simple panel inside Photoshop. It's that easy. And what I'd recommend is experimenting with this, taking a look at your favorite film effects, seeing what their characteristics are, and then seeing how you can emulate that by using the, cur the curves adjustment in Photoshop itself. But let's take a look at the before and after in this image. So this is where we are now with those adjustments. And this is where we started off. So you can see a very stylized look. And if you ever use those Instagram kind of effects or the Visco or VSCO effects, you'll see a lot of this kind of stylized image is being used and is getting very, very popular on things like Instagram. So there we go. That's all there is to this tutorial on how you can use the curves adjustment in Photoshop to create really good looking images with great stylized color effects. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.